mentioned in the previous vlog, with an introduction to the embryology of the posterior fossa, it might be very difficult to tell the difference between pantocerebellar hypoplasia and cerebellar atrophy. This is an 8-year-old patient with capillary telangiectasia and atrophy of the cerebellum. And clues that are in favor of atrophy of the cerebellum are abnormal signal or gliosis in the cerebellum because of the metabolic origin. The pons is not involved when there is atrophy of the cerebellum that has started postnatally. If there is a hypoplasia of the cerebellum and pons, you can have a look at the supratentorial compartment because patients with pantocerebellar hypoplasia often have associated abnormalities, mainly in the posterior part of the brain, such as polymicrogyria or periventricular heterotopia, and also abnormal basal ganglia are associated with pantocerebellar hypoplasia. This is a two-week-old neonate with hypoplasia of both the pons, cerebellar hemispheres and cerebellar vermis. And as mentioned in the introduction and the embryology of the posterior fossa, the cerebellum is formed by proliferating cells of the rhombic lips that cover the membranous area. And when you look on the coronal plane at the rhombic lips, they can be subdivided in rhombomeres and the cerebellum is derived from R1, the first rhombomere. So the entire cerebellum is formed from a very rostral structure. The lower rhombomeres form the nuclei of the pons and the inferior olivary nucleus. And the rhombomeres, the upper and the lower rhombomeres, have overlapping gene sets, which explains both the involvement of the cerebellar hemispheres and the brainstem in pantocerebellar hypoplasia. Pantocerebellar hypoplasia is an umbrella term and there's not only hypoplasia in many cases but also superimposed atrophy on the hypoplasia. This is also a child with a hypoplasia of pants and cerebellum imaged at 30 months and four years old and you can see the progressive atrophy of the cerebellum on the sagittal and also on the transverse images. And again there's involvement of the cerebellar hemispheres and of the vermis. You can also have forms of pantocerebellar hypoplasia where there's also involvement only involvement of the cerebellar hemispheres and not of the vermis because the vermis does not form from fusion of the cerebellar hemispheres, but most likely from another cell mass. And this gives the appearance of a dragonfly. So this is called the dragonfly appearance in pantocerebellar hypoplasia. And the vermis is most likely formed from a cell mass that has a midbrain origin. And this is a human embryo of 29 millimeters, gestational age 9 to 10 weeks, and when going from cranial to caudal, you can see the cerebellar hemispheres forming from the sides, and there's this cell mask marked with an asterisk that is going to be the cerebellar vermis, and the cerebellar hemispheres are here coming in from lateral, and the vermis is coming from above. Um, and this is the level of the inferior olive, where you can also see how big the inferior olive is, emphasizing its importance as a nucleus. There are also diseases that are not classified as pantocerebellar hypoplasia, although there is hypoplasia of the pons and cerebellum, because there is also abnormalities of the midbrain, as in this case of a cask mutation, where there is also tegmental abnormality as you can see here. Thanks for watching and until next time when we will continue with abnormalities of the cerebellar vermis in Dandy Walker Melville.